Welcome to Crypto OGs. Hello, everyone. My name is Paz Gonzalez. I'm the co-host of Crypto OGs, the podcast. But today I have something very special for you. We are going to have our first OG that doesn't have anything to do with crypto and is the number one entrepreneur women in the UAE. Welcome, Sarah Almadani. Thank you so much for having me. So now I'm starting the trend. Yes, you're All right. the first. I'm the OG. Okay, you are it. the OG of the OGs. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Let's do this. You know what's the reason why I wanted to have you on our first known crypto podcast? Why? I saw on one day on your reels that you were talking about you as a mom, as an entrepreneur and everything. Mm -hmm. I became a mom one year ago. It's been a very difficult journey for me. I think someone like you that already has been for so many years can have a lot of things to say about that. For me, I've been struggling a lot mm -hmm. because I've been hearing a lot of people saying negative things about it. A lot of criticism, like people tell, it's like everyone wants you to be at home taking care of your kids and forget about your business life or forget about your career. And I think that's something that everyone says, no, you shouldn't listen. You shouldn't listen. Inside of you, it affects. Of course. So I want to know how it's been your journey in that. Got it. So I've been a mother for eight years and same thing. When I got pregnant, everybody's like, oh, your life is going to change. You can't do business anymore. You better find a job or like you're going to sacrifice your life because I'm a single mom as well. Sacrifice your life to taking care of the kid. But you know what? Sometimes it does affect you because if you keep hearing it from everybody, you're like, they must be right. But me, by nature, I'm rebellious. So every time they told me anything, I was like, why is it true? Like, why does everything they say have to be true? And I've already questioned a lot of things when it comes to conditioning and culture and all that. I was on that journey. So I decided not to listen to them because when if it's your first time to swim in the ocean, people will tell you the water's cold. Some will tell you the water's warm. Some will tell you there's sharks. Some will tell you you'll drown. Some will tell you it's good. Why listen to anybody? Just go find out for yourself. And I feel like this is how every ind individual person should be, especially with motherhood. Discover your own journey. Balance your own life. You don't have to be doing everything else moms are doing so you can be a good mom. I don't take my son to soccer. I don't do things like that with my kid and it's okay. I do not let any mom guilt me because I have my own balance that I create with my kid. There is no book for balance when it comes to being a mother and an entrepreneur at the same time and all these things. Like, yeah, but I know that a lot of women, they judge other women and that's something all women do. You know, don't, men, you, men don't do. you have the, the, the feeling that at the end it's more women of judging course. women than no, men? One million percent. Men don't judge each other. You don't see a, a guy telling another guy, oh, did you spend time with your son? Oh, you're a bad dad. They don't, men don't do that. Women do that. And it's, it's within their nature. But we have to change this kind of approach because I, when somebody comes to do this to me, I don't welcome it. When they try to do it to someone else, I stop it. So, you know, we have to start a trend where we teach women that we do not have to be like that. We were not born like that. We've been conditioned to be like that. And conditioning can be changed. So it's not something you have to live with. And I don't accept it. I don't allow anyone to treat me or treat anyone I know around me in this way, in a judgy way. I love that. No. And as an Emirati, because that's something else as mm. well that is kind of different, you know. I've been living here for 13 years, and I've seen also the evolution in the last 13 years of how things they were when I came and mm. how things they are when are now. How, for example, it's been for you to be a single Emirati mom? I mean, it's not easy. In the beginning, I thought being a single mom in the Arab world is going to be hard, but my friends all over the world are suffering because divorce, being a single mom is a taboo. It's like, you know, frowned upon, you know? And the problem is when when a woman is divorced, the accusation immediately comes to the woman. Like, oh, she probably did something wrong. Oh, she did this. Oh, she did that. So being a single mom was not easy. It was very heavy. And I, I got attacked by a lot of people for being a single mom and I'm divorced twice. So can you imagine? It's like not once, twice, you know? So the, the pressure was doubled. Oh. But, you know, in the end, you are the one that gives power to people's words and ideas. So if I remove that power from you, you cannot trigger me. You have no effect on me. So I'm the one that gives people power. And I decided not to give anyone power. So if you think it's weird, 
great. If you think it's wrong, great. I'm still glowing, flowing, growing. That never stops, you know? You're glowing. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, girl. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, um, all the things that I, I want to really to ask you is like, what has you been the biggest struggle for you as a mom, co like combining your mom and your career? What is the thing that for you has been the most difficult thing? I mean, obviously, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say it's easy. It's not easy to be a single mom. It's not easy to be a mom in general. Yeah. Because the responsibility falls on the woman's shoulder more than the man, right? Which is, it's okay. It's, it's a natural process. I think the hardest part is, when it comes to me being a single mom, is I had to be the, the loving mom and the disciplinary mom. I had to be the mom and the dad. I had yeah. to be good cop, bad cop. I had to be the nurturer and one that teaches and all that. So it's, it was very hard for me. You know, it wasn't easy, but that's how life is. Nothing in life is easy. Not getting a job, not starting a business, not nothing. So if you just treat it as a challenge and just overcome it and learn from it, it becomes an interesting one. It becomes a fun one. So life becomes how you see it. Life is how you are from the inside. If you're angry and bitter and like you feel like you cannot do this, life will become angry and bitter, similar to you. You become a reflection. Your life becomes a reflection of who you are. So it's just all about changing your mindset about things. Yeah, it's, it's definitely hard, but it's doable. It's not impossible. So that's, okay. that's how I take it. Hold Being me. an entrepreneur and a mom, I always take my kid everywhere with me. When I go to meetings, when I go to work, when I do this. And a lot of women try to shame me and tell me, this is mommy guilt. You're dragging your kid everywhere. No, it's not mommy guilt. It's I got to get my ass up and make some money so I can cover the bills and put food on the table. So there you go. take your judgment out of my door, you know, not accepted here. So do whatever you have to do to create the balance. And I don't spend 99.9% .9 of my time with my kid. I probably spend 40% of my time with my kid, but this 40% time is quality time. The rest is I'm working, I'm hustling, I'm grinding, I'm doing what I have to do. But I know moms who spend 100% of their time with their children, but not there. They're not there. They're on the phone. They're, they're on the phone. <laughs> they're mentally somewhere else. They're, I have no idea. So it doesn't matter how much time. It matters what do you do in this time? How much of a quality of time you're giving your child? So women will never make me feel guilty for giving 40% of my kid. I, I work hard and that's a fact. So take your judgment out of the door. And if I feel like any woman around me judges me in this way, I cut her off immediately. Because life is already hard. Why do you need people around you to make you feel like it's harder or impact you with their negativity? No. Nope. Oh, thank you for all. It's like I'm going to a therapy session. <laughs> yeah, babe, $50 per hour. <laughs> Cash up. Crypto, okay. right? Crypto, crypto. I it. I got a wallet. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Changing in another topic. You travel a lot. Yeah. Tell me what is your favorite destination that you have been? I like nature. I like okay. put me in a forest, put me next to the sea. I love. So it can be the Maldives, Seychelles and all that. But I don't have like a number one destination because I feel like if we remove the borders between countries, nationalities and passports, we're all global citizens. We belong to Mother Earth. This is all our home. So every time I travel somewhere, I find a piece of my the puzzle which is my soul. And I pick it up from different countries, different cultures. So I just love traveling. I just love being around the energy and just feeling here. Here I go down the spiritual route. I love Mother Earth. So I want to be everywhere and anywhere. It doesn't matter and as long as I'm moving around. Where is the destination that you haven't been that you want to go? Brazil. I haven't been yet. And I really, really? want to go badly. I want to go to the Amazon so badly. Wow. Yeah. I can help you with that. I have a lot of friends in Brazil. Hook me up, girl. <laughs> But you need to go to Chile because I'm from Chile. And okay. I think you're going to love it. So if at some point I've you want... I've never been, yeah. I, I will organize to. everything for to. you. Really. We have witnesses. You know that. We have I, witnesses. I, yeah, yeah, I take that. We hold that against you. <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, no, no. I would love to go to Chile. I've seen pictures. My friend's been there. It's and it's so different. It's just like a long country and you have from desert to nature to ice. So ice, ice, of course, we have Antarctica in there. So you can go there and see the ice and go in a boat, the ice and everything. Oh, wow. I will, I will send you. How far is Chile from Brazil? Three hours. That's it? Yeah. So Wait. you need to go to Brazil. Okay. Enjoy your time in Brazil. And then you take a flight to Santiago. Okay. And then I will organize all the 
trip for you. Let's do this. See my manager sitting there. I'm like, you, yeah. you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving her work to do. <laughs> no, I would love to. I want to explore new places. I'm a, I'm a traveler as well. I well, I think, I, I don't know if I said that before. I used to be a cabin crew. And you told me that once. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's so cool. Yeah, so oh, then, of course, it's in, within your DNA. You just want to be all over Earth. <laughs> and, you know, I'm not uh, I'm not afraid to say that to people. Like a lot of people tell me, don't say you're cabin crew because Why? it's not like your profile. It's not that because you have, you know, you have two degrees. You also do this, that. But, you know, I'm really proud of that I became a cabin crew. I was a cabin what crew for nine years. And it made me so so happy yeah. that if any girls of 20, 20 something years old doesn't know yet what they want to do with their lives, go travel the world. You will find what you want to do because when you meet people from different countries, mm. when you meet people from different backgrounds, it's actually the time where you realize who are you, Yeah, right? I never thought, the other day I, I met someone from Yemen. I never thought I would meet someone from Yemen. It's, a, it's like I, such an, it's a beautiful opportunity for you to meet different people, different walks of life, different things to learn, different countries to visit. And since when is being a cabin crew something that downgrades your position. I don't know. That's the perception That's of some crazy. people. That's crazy. No. That's perception of some people, you know? Yeah. But it's what it is. And I hope that can change at some point. And apart from traveling, what yeah. other hobbies you have? Hugging, hugging trees a hobby? Hugging trees. I love hugging trees. <laughs> <laughs> really? I'm serious. Yes, I hug trees. Did you? It's it's I love nature. I just love earth. I love everything. That's why you want to go to the Amazons because yes. you have to, to be hugging everyone. Well, I that I spoke to someone from a tribe there and I said, I want to come hug trees. He's like, you don't want to hug trees in the Amazon, like tarantulas and snakes. And he's like, you hug a tree, you're dead. I was like, gosh, that sucks. Probably hug a tree in the city. Or something. <laughs> That's really I, cool. I, just, I, do, I don't know how to explain to you how much I love nature. Because, you know, just like your iPhone dies and it needs a charger, us humans, we, our charger, our plug is grounding and connecting with nature. That's our natural charge. <laughs> That's our natural charge. We need to charge. We need to be out there and surrounded by concrete uh, jungle yeah. does not help. You need to get away every now and then and just ground yourself. Actually, even here that is desert, sometimes every now and then it's good to go to of the course. desert and just be in the middle of nowhere. And, 100%. 100%. And just, Different types of nature, water, air, desert, grass, whatever you can. Just love it. And what other crazy things you like? Like, tell me something crazy. Things I, that are weird I, that, that, that no one knows. Weird. I'm an adrenaline junkie. So anything that takes like jumping off a plane. So really? I, so I've done Superman jump. I don't know if you know about that. No. It's when they put a belt on you and a magnet pulls you and they let you go in the air. Oh my God. So I did that. I jumped off a plane in off a helicopter into water <laughs> in Thailand. I've done punty jumping. I've, everything you can think of that's crazy, I've done. Because I believe that the only way for me to master my my myself and to control myself is to control my fears and to get over my fears i'll do anything i, I like i like to look fear in the eye and say you know i'm i'm your boss you know my boss you know? i'm the boss so what i like it takes, that yeah you're so, griselda from the uae yeah so, so so recently i found out that i have a fear of being in the middle of the ocean and i think it's because of titanic you know that movie just like ruined our childhood you know yeah so i was like i'm scared to be in the ocean in the middle of the ocean because they say that whatever we know about the ocean all these animals and like creatures and whatever is only i think what it was 20 percent of what really exists the rest they haven't discovered so i was like i don't want to go to the ocean and discover something now so what i did is i was in seychelles and we were sailing in the indian ocean and i jumped in the water in the in the indian ocean and it was like windy and wavy and i yeah they, they were about to lose me and but i was like i did <laughs> it yeah. i did it yeah <laughs> Like, she's dead, she's dead. I'm like, I'm not dead. But it was like, I, I need to get over my fears. I hate fears controlling me. And now my latest fear, which is my biggest fear, is claustrophobia. Really? Yeah. And I, what I did to get over it, but I still am not over it, is I went inside the pyramids in Egypt <gasps> to meditate. I had the same yeah. feeling when I went there. I had to get out running. I was screaming, but I did it. I went down, I meditated, but I feel like 
it wasn't that tight. I need to go into somewhere tighter. You need to where you know where you should go. I'm not going in a cave underwater. Don't don't. don't no 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 it. no. In Vietnam, okay. There's the tunnels from the war. I don't want to go into tunnels, girl. Put me in a covered closet. This should be in a tunnel. <laughs> it was horrible for I've me. I've seen videos of people getting this... stuck in a tunnel and dying and their bones crashing. No, I'm not I doing mean, that. It's a small tunnel. It's just that I'm scared of everything, so I run away. You've done it. Yeah, I did it, and I was so scared. That's why I don't do. You know, I ha I'm having anxiety. Like I'm breathing differently after. You told me you went in the tunnel. <laughs> no, then okay, then don't do that because you know the thing is that when you go there, they tell you no, 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 it's nice, it's uh, it's very big, is it? And then I was there and I was like, let's get over here, let's get out of here. Yeah, you know, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's I, I have the same. I have uh, like kind of claustrophobia, not on everything. Like yeah. even I have uh, fear of lifts, lifts, elevators. Yeah, elevators. Like you know, I now I know time. how to scare you. <laughs> don't get in an elevator with me. I'll be jumping up and down. <laughs> Same when you know when you go on those wheels, the, the Ferris, wheel. Ferris wheels, yeah. and you're going with someone, and they start jumping and moving, and I'm like, no, don't do that, don't do that, and they do, they keep doing it and keep doing. I'm afraid. I was a cabin crew. I was a flight attendant, yeah. and I'm a, afraid of heights. Okay. So really, yes. How did you do that? I don't know. How are you in the sky, but fearing? It's different. It, it it doesn't have. I think it doesn't have one thing to do to the other one. Do you know that the plane is ninety nine percent safer than driving a yes. car? Yes. You, so you're you're good. Yeah, and you go in Emirates, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, this is not an advertisement. No one paid Were me for that. Were you Emirates cabin crew? I was Emirates cabin crew. I no wonder. <laughs> <laughs> She just pulled the plug. <laughs> no, but you know, when you're flying, this is how I see it. I, I'm not scared of heights. So when I'm flying, I'm like, if anything goes wrong, I'm closer to God. You know, that's it. We go faster up, you know, oh, we're, we're good. And I actually sleep. Like some people cannot sleep on flights. I sleep 16 hours, 11 hours on flights. Like I'm like, if anything goes wrong, I didn't know. I didn't feel it's easy. That's good. Not yeah. everyone can do that. Not I know. Can. But you know what? A little bird that told me that there is also something special that you like. A little bird told you? A little bird or a big bird, however you want to like. What is that? So Crypto OGs have something for you today. What did you get? Huh. Oh my God. <laughs> How did you guys know this? Send me a you told them. Little bird. I am in heaven. Guys, for the camera, this is like a decked out Nutella box. Everything Nutella. I'm so happy. I couldn't bring it from Europe that I know you like it more. But next time I go to Europe, I will so think sweet. about you. I know it's not a Hermes. It's not a da. It's no, not a thing. This is better than Hermes. Are you kidding me? It's, I love it. It's a gift from us uh, because we wanted to thank you to Best come with us. I ever got on a podcast. I'm not kidding. You have not. Did you tell her how much I love Nutella? And I tried to find an alien as well, but I couldn't find it. I have so many aliens at home. So, <laughs> so we're, yeah, that's fine. I have alien tattoos. Okay. I have alien yeah. everything. Oh my God. I love it. I, you, I swear I can go in tears for this. You have no idea. I love it. <laughs> okay, now about aliens. Okay. I want to know more about that. What do you want to know about aliens? Why you like aliens? so much because i like aliens i love aliens and i love all about aliens because they exist it's it's I civilization i have respect to the law of the universe and everything and i don't think that god wasted all building and doing all of these things all these galaxies and everything just for us humans to exist in a dot like we're just one dot in the middle of everything so i i respect it i've done research about it i've interviewed people about it we're all aliens as well aren't we i am an alien at mm -hmm. least for my family because I'm the different one. Yeah. And you need to meet my little alien. I wanted to bring my little alien today. You have a little alien? Oh, yeah. your children. Yeah. Of course, our little She's alien. A super little alien. Oh. But uh, she was not on the mood today. No, I, I love, <laughs> like, look, I like, okay, jokes aside, I probably out of my day, I spend, let's say, four hours every day into just like, nurturing my mind uh, a body and soul and you know it's it's part of my spiritual practice is i sit and i research and i watch documentaries upon documentaries so i've done so much research about aliens you have no idea and there is actually something that i want to do there's a doctor called dr i think greer he does a meditation called c E5, if I'm not mistaken, CE5. This is a, medit a meditation that you do. And then you have an, an experience where you see extra 
extraterrestrials. You can connect with them wow. energetically. So I'm dying to go do this. Let's go together. Yeah, I'm like, it's it's real. And plus, like, when I was young, I did see some things. I don't know what they are, what it is, but as long as it's not human, then it's a different species than whatever it is, different vibration. So I'm like, I've so, like this is an alien tattoo over here. Okay, this is a civilization from Orion's belt called the Palladians. Okay. And they look like this. And then I have this one over here. This is the grays. Wow. Yeah. So I, I love aliens. And you, I, know, you know that Chile is one of the places I know, the that biggest they, sightings. They, yeah, I yes. Know. You know why? Because, well, the town where I'm from, I'm not from the, the capital. I'm from the north. Yeah. There is a valley. It's called the Elki Valley. Mm. Is the cleanest energetically a, a sky in the world. Is the cleanest. It's where you can see more stars. So whenever you come, we should go together, and I will bring you there, and I will bring Girl, you. To, we it, go at night. Yeah, we we you, go. You, you drive. I'll get the flashlight. We just camp there. And you, you, just wait. you just yeah, you can do that. They actually yeah. they have some places. You go there. You watch the stars. Mm -hmm. So there is one of the places where more uh, like. I was going to say OVNI because that's in Spanish, but it's UFO. <laughs> yes. What do you say in Spanish? OVNI. 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 O-V-N-I. OVNI. Yeah. I think a new tattoo is coming. OVNI. OVNI. Yeah. Because OVNI is a, it's Objeto Volador No Identificado. So it's like unidentified. I don't know even what UFO means. Yeah, unidentified <laughs> objects. <laughs> <laughs> now they call them UP, UP, un, UPIs, they call them now, I think they changed the name from UFO to something oh, else. Oh, they exchange names to everything. Yeah. And it's so confusing, honestly. Actually, I don't believe anything like governments say about aliens. I don't believe. Like yeah. the US government, what they say, I don't believe that. Like, I don't believe that they caught or saw anything. It's they just, don't say it. They yeah. know what what's going on. They, they don't just don't say it. Yeah. Because or, they don't want to scare certain people because... You and me, we like aliens, but maybe some people, no, they get scared. I think it's deeper than that. Yeah? They're gonna... Okay, we're going down the rabbit hole, girl. It's not good. But let me tell you one thing. Right now, with everything happening in the world, an alien abduction is the best vacation I can have. So if we can get abducted, me and you, when we go to Chile, it'll be great. Wow. Yeah. And then maybe we create crypto in there, in the alien world. <laughs> My God, they don't even care about money. And aliens are like very high vibrational beings. They're way more advanced than us. They're, they're on a different level. And for them, they don't have money and buying and all that. It's like they grow their own food. They build their own homes. It's like they're existing love, you know? And plus, like, everyone's like, oh, aliens want to want to kill humans. I bet you anything, they pass by Earth and they're like, ew, you know, they leave. Uh, why would I waste my time? Why would I waste humans? my time there? Have you seen them? Jealousy, envy, hate, anger, wars. Like, what's low? And they leave. So I don't think they, they really care. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. Like the conversation went all over the world. Yeah. I bet you anything your listeners are like, wait, I'm, uh, I'm listening to this podcast for crypto. What's happening here? Well, I would, just, I, I don't want to put you in any bad situation. What do you, do you know anything about crypto? Like what's your basic knowledge I, about crypto? The thing is I am, I, most of my companies are tech and yeah. I work with a lot of NFTs and stuff like that. So I understand crypto, but I just feel like it's not attractive to me in a way for me to invest in it because I've seen my friends die and come back and lose their money and lose their yeah. wallets and all that. So it, it was like, for me, it's, it's tension and I don't like to live in tension. Like for me, like I don't even care if... I have this much money or not. I, I'm just living. I'm, I love life. Life is easy. So I feel like this is extra tension and life is already full of tension and yeah, unnecessary. I, the, well, unpredictable. Just, yeah, just for... Gambling in a way. It's, the thing is that this is more like a crypto yeah. advice to everyone for you as well. Like crypto is not only crypto. Like, whip my ass. Go crypto ahead. Crypto <laughs> is based on a technology that is yeah. called blockchain. Yeah. And I think the future is not only on cryptos, on coins yeah. and on investing on that. The future is on projects that they are built on this and technology. Yeah. They are built on blockchain. We use the blockchain. I will, exactly. I, will not, I will not deny that it's genius. And when I sit with my friends and I see them online doing their crypto stuff, it really is attractive for me. And I think it's very fascinating, but it's not my passion, which is completely fine. You know what I mean? Some people like it, some people don't. But I, for me, for me, Asada, like I do not like anxiety and all that. And some people handle yeah. it well. And my friends handle it well. Like my friend last time, he was like, 
he lost a wallet that had $52 million. Yeah. Can you imagine like how he feels, you know? Oh my God. Yeah. It's like, it's fine. We'll do it again. For me, I, I couldn't sleep on his behalf for a week. $52, $52 million is gone. So it fascinates me, especially when I see women in crypto and I love seeing it. But do I want to do it? No. It's like, but it's not, not everyone, my thing. Not yeah. everyone needs to do yeah. the same. Like, I mean. Yeah. But the blockchain. Uh, uh, for me, it's the blockchain. Like, I'm a very. Unbelievable. I'm very bullish on the blockchain yeah. technology. I'm bullish on companies that they can come and use the technology yeah. to solve problems that yeah. other technologies they couldn't do 100%, before. 100%. 100%. More yeah. than in the, yeah. the, the. like. And maybe it will change. I don't know. Maybe next month I'll be in crypto. I don't know. Because. Uh, us humans, we have the right to change our mind, right? But at the moment, this is how I see it. But it does fascinate me, especially you being a woman doing this. It's like, it's very sexy for me. It's unbelievably Ooh, I'm sexy. sexy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Girl, you are sexy. You know it. <laughs> and so in all of the things you have done, what do you consider you are an OG? If you need to say Heal oh, healing, the OG. Healing. Healing? Rising up from the ashes. Like it's because, you know, I've been through so much of my life and pe a lot of people try to bury me. But there's a saying, I don't know if you heard it. They say they try to bury us, but they forgot we're se that we're seeds. So when you bury a seed, it grows, you know, it, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't die. So I think if I was to be an OG in something, I would be like in literally bouncing back in life and getting back on track and healing like that's that's my thing that's my go-to and maybe like because yeah i have like over 90 tattoos is that an og thing yeah okay yeah we can do yeah, that as well yeah. yeah totally when did you do your first tattoo 14 14 which was completely illegal i don't know how it happened. yeah 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. what yeah. did your parents say when they didn't know i had tattoos until i was 25 and they didn't know. It's funny, you know, because I I had two tattoos at that time. I had one here on my wrist and I had a butterfly on my shoulder. And every wedding I go to, my mom was like, is that a real tattoo on your back? I'm like, no. She's like, why? We've been to 10 weddings. Why does the butterfly always look the same if it's a sticker? I'm like, I'm buying the same sticker. What's wrong with you? So she, and then, you know, I was like, I'm tired of pretending to be someone I'm not. And I remember I walked in the room like, mom, I need to show you something. She's like, what? I took off my clothes. I'm like, she's like, what the hell is that? Are these stickers? I'm like, no, they're not stickers. <laughs> they're stickers. I'm like, they're tattoos. So, you know, she was a bit upset because culturally, you know, it's not yeah. accepted. But for me, I'm not a product of culture. I'm a human. So I tried to explain to my mom that next time you see something different that you're not used to, instead of either fearing it or running away from it, ask me, am I happy? Just ask me, are you happy, Sada? Does this make you happy? And just listen to what I have to say. And if I'm happy, just be happy for me. Instead of judging and feeling like this is different or you're not used to it, we're not the same. And I always tell my mom, and this is my advice for any moms out there. If you have children, it does not mean you own your children. Yeah. You were a vessel for them to come into this life. Your children has free will. I have a free will. God gave us a free will. You cannot take that away from your kids. How is life beautiful if someone's taking decisions on your behalf how are you going to learn if someone is telling you what to do we are species that have to practice free will let your children pra practice it of course not that i i'm not saying like if your children are like doing wrong things drugs or whatever like let them, <laughs> no i'm not saying that you can practice your free will and live a life that makes you happy as long as you're not harming yourself and harming others exactly that's it as long as you're not that's it it's as simple as that i also believe in that yeah like i don't i yeah. didn't like you know uh, i'm coming from like Latin America and Latin America, we are very also conservative. Mm. Like, so I always felt like I was the black sheep from the family Yeah, because I studied sports management because I wanted to become a FIFA agent. You're a tough cookie. <laughs> okay. Imagine. Uh, then you have your cousins, your friends that they are all studying, I don't know, for other stuff. And you are the, the, the weird one. You like football that no one likes football. You're the woman that likes to go to watch football, that wants to work in football. Yeah. Uh, then I study business administration. So I had like a more like wider opportunities because mm -hmm. at that time, I'm, I'm talking about 2005. Yeah. Women in football was not like a thing. Yeah. So I... So you felt weird because... Because no one was no no, like you? No, no, it's not that they, that they don't like you. It's that they prefer men there. Because no, but they did, you think, did you feel weird because no one was like you from the girls around you? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Because you are the weird one. 
but I love. Like, the I'm weird still one. the weird one. I'm, I'm still with the weird one. You love it. It's because the best. I go and, and I'm the person that <laughs> I'm the ones playing with those coins yeah. <laughs> and and with those uh, paintings <laughs> that they are selling that they are NFT. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm still the weird one. Like all my f my cousins, my everyone they they have like a traditional job nine mm -hmm. to five, and that and and I respect that. We are all not all the same, but I was never that kind of person. I tried to do that type of jobs nine yeah. to five. But it was never for me. Yeah, it was never for me as well. It was never for me. Next, and th next time someone tells you you're weird and you should do things differently, you know, it's, it just, you know, tell them you laugh because I'm different. I laugh because you're all the same. So it's, I love being weird. I love being different. And, you know, we, us, like me as a person, you as a person, we will never be replicated again in this world. You are one version of you and that's it your dna your complexity who you are as a person internally outside your mood your brain it's never going to be repeated again so why do i why should i fit in why should i be like everybody else but it's really sad right it's really sad that people try don't accept to it try, yeah I, I i feel not for me but i like sometimes i think on my daughter it's sad that people think like this great but it's not also sad because you need polarity you need opposites so both sides can exist if there's yeah. no this this will not exist if there's no that that's not gonna so we we balance each other so that's the law of the universe basically polarity the yin and yang so we need balance so it's okay for them to be like that i am Let's be different. That's fine. And in terms of uh, talking about like uh, UAE uh, Emirati men, when you start with your tattoos and become be more like a different type of Emirati, mm -hmm. how did the Emirati men took that? They don't like it. They Emirati don't like men it? and women don't like it. And the thing is, you know, it doesn't matter how I look. I don't have to look a certain way to be accepted by a certain group. I don't. And to be honest, if there is something Dubai can teach you when it comes to tolerance and understanding and diversity, like look at Dubai, how many nationalities, how many religions exist yeah. here? Dubai taught me to be like this, to be Emirati, but be different. There's nothing wrong with that. But I understand that people are, you know, they're marinated in the culture for so many years, so they're not used to this. And But the minute you free yourself from that is the minute you start living. Or maybe they are scared to be yes, out. they're scared. And I think most people attack me because they hate the fact that I did it and they can't and they're scared. You know, they want to do it. Everybody wants to set themselves free, but they can't. But, you know, at the end, a lot of Emiratis, they should be happy that you are who you are because you are one of the faces of the UAE outside and that makes UAE different and people don't think that you come here and everyone is covered and you cannot yeah. do anything and you cannot you know because yeah. that's the feeling that when I say that I live in Dubai, they think, oh, but you go cover, you go this. I say, no, yeah. Dubai is a really, really, you need to be respectful on certain yeah. things. I'm uh, like in Ramadan, you need to be respectful when you go to a mosque, when you do this, certain things, you need to be respectful with the culture. Yeah. But it doesn't mean it's like so close. No, it's free. I think you are a very good ambassador for the UAE. A lot of people don't think that, which is okay. I, I think I represent my country well, okay? But a lot of people think I don't, which, which I respect. I, I, let me say it this way. When someone says you are, and, I, and I've heard it, and on, they attack me online a lot and they say it. They say, you don't represent the UAE. You are an embarrassment for the UAE. And oh my I, God. what I say is, I don't agree, but I accept your your whatever you're saying. I accept it, but I don't agree with you. So it, I don't let anything bother me. P what people say never get to me at all. Zero. I have thick skin. So if I am doing a good job representing, then I know that I'm doing a good job. I don't need everyone to agree to it. And I am, look, the, the UAE, if you look at the UAE, the UAE is a fusion between the past and the future. It's There's culture, but there's modern, there's cosmopolitan city, and there's old city. I am that. I'm a product, a byproduct of my country's vision. I have the culture, I have the, the roots, the base, and the ethics and morals, but I look different. And this is isn't this what Dubai is? Dubai is futuristic, but yet very rooted and cultural. So I am bad. And I don't think there's anything wrong with someone looking different. And what doesn't make sense to me is that I have to look a certain way to be accepted by a certain group. Why? Why do you have expectations of the way I look? Why do I have expectations of the way you look? It's completely wrong. Let people be. Just let people be happy. Am I good to you? Am I kind? Am I there for you? Am I respectful? End of story. What you see outside 
doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. And you can, I don't judge anybody. You can be Emirati, you can be from Mars, you can be anywhere. No matter how you dress, who you are, how you look, I love you for your spirit, for your soul. I do not judge the outside. We are in the end, what? Spirits with a human experience, which means I'm an energy and this is my car in this world. So if you don't like my car, it's okay. I'm not, I'm fine with that. You know, I don't have to judge people for how they look from the outside. Thank you, Sarah, so much. Like I've been, I think this conversation, I felt it more like a friend's Yeah. conversation sitting on a coffee like girl place chatting over coffee yeah, yeah. i'm really happy uh, to have you with me here yeah. i hope to see you soon around in oh, any man. events at the birthday of semia um, <laughs> okay no <laughs> i'm, I'm so like completely that. honored thank you so much and to be honest you made my day with the nutella you have no idea how much i love nutella uh, it's, it's something no idea you just gave me an ap watch that's what you did Okay. Nutella is this for me. <laughs> I don't know how you do it with that nice body and eating Nutella. Yeah. That's the next conversation for the next time. Yeah, keep it for the next time. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Thank so, you much, so much, Sarah. Hi, everyone. It's uh, Sean Demostenos here from the Crypto G's podcast. I have a very special guest today, Sarah Almadani. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Honestly, it's a pleasure to have you here. So I've been watching you for quite a while now, and it's amazing to see you grow and your journey. Uh, some of the things everyone knows you for is being a motivational speaker, spiritual, an entrepreneur, an investor, and a mother, most importantly. Some of the things I'd love to dive into with you is more about your entrepreneurship and your time in the US. Yeah. I think you had quite a few years there, and you know, I'd love to hear more about the journey there. Yeah, that was a crazy journey there. <laughs> no, so um, I used to be a fashion designer for 20 years. And then I realized that I never even liked it. I just did it because I'm a woman and women do women things, right? Society molding women into that. It's uh, basically conditioning. And then I've went to the States for like a visit to see my friend. And then she's like, hey, I, she works in a tech company. She's like, hey, listen, I have to go to this conference. So maybe I see you like later, we can hang out. I was like, babe, you already made plans with me for the whole day. She's like, then come with me. And I was like, what am I gonna do there? She's like, just come with me. So I went with her and I remember I was sitting down, there was this guy on stage speaking and he was like, tech is a, ma a male industry. And he went on and on and on. And when he said male industry, I was like, oh, he did not just say that, you know? And then a fire started in me and I was like, I want to do tech just to piss him off, you know? So I left the event and I was like, I want to not only do tech, I want to do tech in the States to show him that an Arab from Dubai came to America and conquered and she's a woman and she did it. So I opened my first tech company there and I hired the guy, the same guy on stage. I hired wow. him. Yeah. I hired him for six months. And I remember every day I used to see him in the office. I was like, hmm. So what is it? Tech is who space? For who, for what, for why? And he's like, stop, you know, just stop it. So my journey started with tech in the States, stayed there for four years. What we did was basically robotics and um, robotics, AI, and tech related to gaming and related to Hollywood movies. Gotcha. So we did that. And then after doing that, for an Emirati coming from Dubai, where it's safe and everything is like easy and you know, everything is there for you and accessibility and availability. You go to America and, you know, I was staying in one of the safest areas there, Glendale. Okay. So Glendale is where all the Persians and the Armenians live. And I needed like my homies, my food, you know, <laughs> something to feel like home. So I stayed there. And I remember one day somebody got shot under the building. And I remember everyone was out of the windows in the apartments looking at like what's happening downstairs. And everyone was like, oh, it's okay. He got shot. And everybody got inside their apartment. Apartments, and I was like the only one that was like, what the hell happened? What the hell's going on? So seeing how it's normalized there is what made me get really scared. I was like, that shouldn't be normal. And that doesn't feel normal. I was like, I'm packing my bags and I'm going back. So for four years, I, were, I was on and off, on and off, on and off. And then I just came back to Dubai and just carried on doing whatever I do from here, from Dubai and expanding into tech. Wow. Yeah. That's karma because I don't agree that men should be running the tech space. Yeah. Um, so the fact you got into it, did it turn into a passion? Did you Completely. love it in the end? You know. Completely, because, okay, I, as an entrepreneur, I am not the type of entrepreneur that gets things done. I'm the visionary, the creative one. And then I have the team that gets it done. You know, I'm, I'm the leader with the mindset. And I don't mind talking about my weaknesses because that's 
how entrepreneurs should be. I am not the jack of all trades and I'm at peace with that. And then I find people who are better than me at what I can do and I bring them and I learn from them. So as an entrepreneur, for example, finance is not my biggest thing. I'm, I have dyslexia, dyscalculia, so numbers are not my thing, and which is completely fine. And I want entrepreneurs to know that you don't have to be good in finance to be an entrepreneur, you know? You just have to have that spice in you of wanting to be a creator because I love the process of imagining something, putting it on paper, then bringing it to life. I love that. That To me, that's like the essence of entrepreneurship. I just started doing a lot of things in tech, investing in tech, shut down my fashion company completely and completely immersed in tech. And I love it. I love it because even as a fashion designer, I used to imagine things and bring them to life, right? Pieces and dresses and whatever. But as a tech entrepreneur, it's beyond bringing it to life. It's bringing it to life in a completely different aspect and way and just making people's life more easy. You know, I love the, the easiness of tech. I so this is why I did that. It's quite impressive, right? Because the last 10, 20 years, yeah. how else will we, you know, it's entrenched to AI. Yeah. And that whole format of AI coming in is just changing the way we work. Mm -hmm. So your performance is 80% better. Yeah. It just speeds up every process. Now, AI is obviously a hot topic. Are you looking into anything at the moment? Are you investing in that space? I am investing in AI, but also I am conflicted when it comes to AI because it's like, okay, are we taming the beast or are we feeding the beast? You know, what's happening there? And I've watched Terminator and I don't want our, <laughs> like, I don't want our ending or the ending of humanity to be because of AI. And AI is becoming so intelligent now to the extent that I remember, I'm not going to say the name of the company, but it's a huge company. Everybody knows it, you know, starts with a G. So this company once had a board member meeting and they just grabbed all their shareholders, had an emergency meeting to inform everyone that they have been building an AI. This is in 2000, this story is from 2016. Wow, okay. So they called all the board members to tell them that they have been working on an AI for seven years and it became so intelligent that they can't shut it off. Every time they shut it off, it finds a way to restore itself and that it was picking up on emotions in a scary way because you're feeding it information. So it doesn't process, inf of course, emotions like humans do because we have, a, we have consciousness, we have guilt, we have that, that stops us from doing things that are wrong. It doesn't. It doesn't have consciousness. It just has different emotions built in, built in it, picked up from everything around it. So my my confliction when it comes to AI is that will A, I don't want AI to take uh, away the importance of humans. So now instead of a director writing a story with his passion, like ChatGPT can write one for you. So I don't want it to take away from the passion and art of what we do because that's taking away the flavor from the food and the food becomes, you know, blunt. Everybody yeah. can be a director now. Everybody can be a writer. Everyone can write a book. And that's not how it should be. It's, it's everyone has a talent and there is an art and a flavor to everything. So that's one part of it. The second part is where is it going? And is it regulated? Because we, everyone on ChatGPT is feeding AI information. I could be a serial killer on ChatGPT. You could be a normal person. I can, I, ch I talk to ChatGPT as if it's a, a best friend or a therapist. Like I ask it like spiritual questions, mental health questions, but what is George, John, Mary asking it? What, what are we feeding AI? What are we doing with it? And what if it becomes too smart and then it becomes the end of humanity? Now I'm scared. It, it is scary. <laughs> Haven't you watched Terminator? Of course I have. I mean, we they it's wanted to do something great. It, yeah. it, instead of becoming greater, it backfired. Yeah, I think for me, it's I look at I use it every day. Yeah. What you just said is completely true. Now, if there's no parameters and it just keeps growing, where are yeah. we going to be in 10 years? Exactly. And I also believe that the best companies in the world have a real visionary, an art developer. Do they? The best companies. Do they? Crafting. Well, Degree to disagree, or you know, okay. For me, the brand is generally the CEO or the yeah. person driving that company. Um, I look at the best founders in the world, you know them better than you do the company mm -hmm. because they're the narrative, they're the visionary. Yeah, but the founder is not the one controlling everything. No. The founder has a vision, he puts restrictions and rules and makes sure they happen, but the people under him. Yeah. How do you know what they're doing? You know? It's so that, that's the right? scary part. Well, you'd be a founder and you can still have a CEO because CEO would be more driven yeah. in terms of the company side. True. That's true. But I just feel like, you know, if we have more ethical tech entrepreneurs, yeah. it will make it a better space because I've met a lot of unethical people in, in the space. Got you. Yeah. And they bluntly say like, oh, technology, we were building technology to just wipe out everything humans do, jobs and everything. Why would it? It's like, that's not how life is. That's not, that's not how we end. 
end, you know, let's don't do that. So it's like, I want more ethical tech entrepreneurs. And this is why I became an entrepreneur because I wanted to become an ethical tech entrepreneur, you know, and having women in that space, because women operate from an emotional place, they're more emotional than logical and men are more logical than emotional and it brings a balance. So you need that balance. You need more women in tech so they can, you know, bring that, that, that perspective to it. I think women have a different flavor. Yeah. And you know, it's the description is the visionary, you know, you can do a lot more, you know, the mind's very different. Yeah. One thing I was noticed when I was in London for 10 years trading, um, I had some amazing mentors. Now without them, I would never have got to where I am today. Mm -hmm. You know, my business savviness comes from them teaching me and you being, you know, an entrepreneur who was teaching you and who was your mentor when you were younger? No one. I grew up in an era, I'm 38 years old. So when I was an entrepreneur, the first business I started was 15. I had employees at the age of 15. So going back to that time, there was no internet. It was dial up internet. Like we knew nothing. There was no, not much happening on TV. I didn't know what is an inspiration or someone to motivate me or someone I look up to, or there wasn't this. And being an entrepreneur at the age of 15, my parents was like, were, were against it. They're like, what are you doing? Go play with the kids outside. Well, you're scary. You know, what are you doing at the age of 15? So having, being in an environment that wasn't completely supportive and understanding, it wasn't easy doing it. So I had to learn how to be self-sufficient and growing up and then with the booming of the internet and, you know, all these public speakers and motivational people and all these stories out there, I learned to be self-sufficient and not de not to depend on that, you know? So I am completely self-sufficient. I depend on myself. I motivate myself. I inspire myself. And yes, of course, any person out there, I'm not going to tell you, oh, uh, Tony Robbins or blah, blah, or this. I'm not going to give names because every single person out there that's trying is an inspiration for me. Every person out there going out there, putting everything and risking everything just to live their dreams is biggest inspiration, even if they failed, biggest inspiration for me. So I don't like to label it or linger to somebody. I just, I am learning from everybody. Good. You know, yeah. No, it's amazing to hear. And to be honest, you're an inspiration to a lot of women, but also young entrepreneurs who want to make it. You are a mother. You are an entrepreneur. You're an investor. You do so much. How much time you have to yourself is like, I guess, you know, you, you have to juggle a lot of obstacles. And yeah, it's it's endearing to see. It's very nice. It's just pleasant. It, it is. But at the same time, like people, when they look at my life, they go like, okay, she's managing nine companies. Now, when you when you tell people I have nine companies, they think, oh my God, how does she do it? I'm not the CEO of all of them. I launched them. I was a CEO. I stepped back. I am the CEO of only two companies right now. Gotcha. Yeah. And and they're easy to manage, easy to, to go with. It's tech companies. So I can work from anywhere. Six months, I can be in Bali. Two months, I can be in, in India. Three months, I can be in America. And I all I need is a laptop and an internet connection. That's it to run my business and to be a CEO of this company and manage everything. So when people look at my life they go like oh my god she's probably like always busy always um have no time for herself and blah blah and all that i have all the time in the world for myself you have no idea like if i am doing business so i i end up having no time then why am i doing business i'd rather be an employee and have all the time in the world for myself because business is supposed to buy you freedom and if it's not buying me the freedom of my time why am i doing business so i don't micromanage i operate from a leadership perspective and the most important thing is I put my mental health first. So if you ask me, okay, what do you do most of the days or most of the month? Like, how do you divide your life? I'll tell you 80% of it is taking care of me, my, my, my mind, body, and soul. And the rest is taking care of business. This is how I operate. I work only three days a week. That's it. I do not take meetings outside of those three days, none, zero. And then the rest of that, I'm doing what I love, my passion, my focusing on spirituality, focusing on my spirit, growth and healing and all that. I focus on that. And because I did that, I'm a better entrepreneur because I've done the healing, because I take care of my mental health. I'm a better entrepreneur. I'm a better mom. I'm a better friend. I'm a better everything. And people don't take that seriously. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of people spending a lot of money on trips and travels and buying things and all that. And none of them spend money on their mental health or therapy or internal growth. And for me, these people are just existing. They're not living because you do not understand who you really are until you've done the inside work, the inner work, because who you are right now, you're masked with traumas. You're wearing a filter of like pain and trauma and like all the things you've been through in your life. And you don't know yourself beyond that mask. Wait until you take it off. Life is completely different. And this is why I urge all entrepreneurs to really, really take the time off and just focus on themselves because working 24 seven, like I, I know friends who are robots, like they're 
working 24 seven. And I ask, I'm like, George, you know, when you die, none of your companies go with you. None of your cars go with you. None of your cash go with you. Does that make sense to you that all you're doing in life is this? I'm like, it's just borrowed. It's just borrowed for you to enjoy life and for you to learn and to just like go through life. But the truth is, what are you here to do then? If it's not these things, if they don't go with you, what are you, what are you here to do? You're here to create memories. You're here to find your path. You're here to find your purpose. That is what you're here for. But sadly, no, a lot of people are like robots. They're existing. They're not living. But wait until you live. Wait until you've done the healing. Oh my goodness. People have no idea. If you think you're a good entrepreneur, wait until you've done the work. The wow. in inside work. You're you'd be completely different. Your creativity would be completely different. To be honest, yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, I wish I had the same, you know, mentality. I go to Bali, as you said, yeah. for three months a year. Yeah. I work from there, I take my laptop, you come back a different person. I've 100%. Been, been in Dubai for 10 years. I was working on, you know, a desk. Yeah. It's difficult, right? You don't let your mind breathe, you don't really get to see the nature. Yeah. Bali for me is my heaven. That's yeah. my sanctuary. Totally. Um, and for me, I, I go there every year to get away. I love that. And to be honest, you know what? I'll give you a small scenario just to show you how I am. If I have a couple of investors, um, around six that sit on the board of like most of the things I do in tech and they invested in most of my companies and they would call like, let's say they were all on WhatsApp groups. So they'd go on WhatsApp group and they go like, okay, we need a meeting to more urgent. You know what my reply is? It's not, oh guys, I got you. Let's do it. It's guys, I have a healing session tomorrow. Can we move it to after tomorrow? <laughs> They're like, are you serious? Yes. My mental health comes before my investors, comes before my work, comes before anything I do. My mental health is above everything. And that's the best form of self-love. Self-love is not buying the latest bag or the latest car or going jet setting around the world to different countries and parties. That's not self-love. That's you being very invested in this, in, in the body and not in the spirit. But yet we are not just a body. This is my vehicle in this life. So yeah, I, I would tell them, no, I cannot. Can you move your healing? Nope, I cannot move my healing. We move the meeting. So, and by the way, the reason they all invest in me is because I am so good at managing work and the reason i'm good at managing work is because i do the healing so don't take that away from me and if you pressure me nope nothing comes above beyond that and they know that in the beginning it was hard they wouldn't understand but now they all get it like oh my god just leave the hippy dippy alone and we'll come back to her for another <laughs> meeting you know <laughs> i love that as well yeah what's the one thing you do for healing if you ever need a, you have a bad day or you know you want to go and what's your one thing you do for um, healing it's not one thing it's not there's so many things on the spectrum of healing i do hypnotherapy i do spiritual healing which is internal deeper work with the spirit i go on retreats I, I like the sky is the limit if somebody tells me have you tried blah 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 blah, i go like i'm down if it's healing i'm down for it and you know the funny part is that i love how people who don't know me and just see me online they have a different scenario of me going through their head different stories of my life and how i am some people think i'm out 24 7 partying i barely leave the house i i only uh uh i only vibe with a close group of friends that i can trust and love so much i only do things with them my circle is small if i don't have to go out i never go out unless i have to it's for work and if i want to go out it's definitely to do something that nurtures and you know creates memories and all that so i'm i barely go out i don't party i don't do all these things like unless it's work so people have different scenarios of sada in their head and i love just sitting there and i'm like and then what did sada do you know <laughs> and then what did she do because everyone looks at you differently and they judge you based on your social media but no i'm if you want to find me i'm in a retreat in kenya i'm you know working with different things different medicines like trying different things i just love healing love healing you should go to Cappadocia in Turkey. If you haven't I've been, it. of course I've been. It's oh amazing. my God, I meditated there. I love it. I love it. Energy is pure there. I love yes. it. Yeah. Did you do the hot air balloons in the of air? Of course. Obviously, so. Isn't that the purpose of Cappadocia? Yes. That's what people go? Like <laughs> I, people book a trip there just to go on a balloon and come back and then go back to Istanbul. You know, that's what they do. Yeah. But yeah, it's beautiful there. Yeah. And we had a three-day retreat. So it was part of the healing process. Yeah. To get away from work, to get away from the office. Yeah. You know, for me, if I can do it every so often, it's amazing. You know, you're doing it every day or every week, you know, whenever I, you need. Every single day. Wow. I meditate every single day. I practice like spiritual practices every single day because, you know, that's the the best way for me to show up for everything, even for my investors, you know, and, and let's not forget for all the entrepreneurs out there, investors don't invest in ideas, mm. you know, great. You have an amazing idea. Great. But if you're a, a person that's not accountable behind that great idea, they will not invest invest in you. Investors invest in people. And when they see how much you take care of your mental 
mental health and how your your stability mentally is important and that derives a better business result, they invest in you more and they yeah. respect that. My investors respect the fact that I put myself first. No, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. The founders, of, you know, as you say, you invest in them. Yeah. Because they believe in their own product. Totally. Yeah, totally. Do you, do you work closely with other founders when you do invest in them? You know, say a company? Um, it, you mean when I invest? When you invest in them, do you sort I, of come as a... No, so it's crazy. Let me take you through the journey. So let's say we do something called a boot camp, okay? okay? Where we invite, like, let's say six, seven people who have great ideas, startups, okay? And what we do is we put them through this test for three days where they are in a place they have to survive in. No food, no this. We put them all together. They have to build a shelter da, 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 and all that. So we do that like once a year. And the reason we do that is because if you cannot survive that, if you end up fighting with everybody and you like, I can't do this, it's too much. Or you leave or you say, that's not important. You should like my idea and like me. I don't want to do that. I look at their attitude before I look at their idea. I swear to God. And then when, they were, when they're when they done, I'm like, okay, you, what do you do? They're like, so why did you select me? I'm like, your personality. And I know whatever business idea you do, you're going to blow it out of proportion because your attitude, your resilience, your charisma, your teamwork, this is exactly what I want to invest in. Now, what's your idea? And if your idea doesn't work, I'll make an idea with you and I'll invest in you. So I completely and solely invest in people. I, I Even sometimes I've invested in people that didn't have much knowledge in what they do. And I was like, you know what? We'll take you on courses because everything can be taught. But that entrepreneurial spirit cannot be taught that you have. Agreed. Yeah. I think it's insane. And that's like a boot camp. Like I it's love it. The most insane boot camp I've ever heard. <laughs> most startups go through like a demo day. They no, speak to people. This is boring. That is boring. <laughs> because that's boring. You know why? Because that's like a fake CV. You can yeah. come and show me the best version of you and show me that you are the best entrepreneur. They're resilient. You will take criticism. You will swallow your pride and all that. And you can take anything. But the truth is, you might be acting and you're actually just trying to put an impression up there. Yeah. But in that boot camp, you can't impress anybody because we will pressure you to the core. Yeah. We've seen a number of projects come through in crypto. Obviously, you can tell what the market is. Yeah. You have some amazing projects, some amazing founders. Yeah. And then the other 90% have no idea about what they're actually doing. True. It's just a cash grab. True. Um, but the 10% that do is amazing. Technology is huge. Yeah. This is this is basically payments for the future. Yeah. That's the technology. Yeah. We don't need to know how it works. It's just, you know, we use it. It's going to yeah. be instant payments within two minutes. Totally. Yeah. So it, it's a lovely area for me. So I enjoy technology. I love the fact you invest in technology. You're a part of it. You yeah. enjoy it. Um, and I'm sure when you're in the US as well, you know, as a successful Arabic businesswoman, were there any obstacles that you had to face? And, you know, how did you, how did you take them on? In the US? Yeah. I mean, of course, the first and foremost is the fact that I'm Arab. It was a bit of a, of a struggle. And then the fact that I'm a woman is a struggle. The fact that I'm not doing it in my country and doing it there is was a struggle. Mm. So I would say there are there's a lot of obstacles when it comes to entrepreneurship, but they only become fatal obstacles if you give them that energy, if I make them bigger than what they are. Like if somebody tells me, yeah, you're a woman, I'm like, so? And like, the, the the obstacle comes from this year, goes out of that year, and as if nothing happened. But if I think that my gender is an issue, if I think doing business in the US is a problem and an issue, then it will become an issue. But if I don't see it as an issue, it's just like a bump on the road. You go on top and you're on your way. You know, that's it. And you learn from it. Yeah. Nothing is easy. And I think if you ask me, what's your what's the sauce? Like, what is your secret sauce, okay? To, for what you do in being an entrepreneur. A, I'm not afraid of failure. I'm not ashamed shamed or I don't and I don't feel guilty when it comes to failure you know because shame and guilt are always attached to failure we've been subconsciously programmed to think like that I'm not scared of failure I speak openly about it I wouldn't have been the person I am if I haven't failed so if somebody out there tells you we're successful we never failed bullshit you know everybody fails and it's the best school ever and number one so I'm not ashamed of that number two I'm a risk taker so to be an entrepreneur you have to be a risk taker you can't just sit comfortably and like think that everything's going to happen for you and come to you there is a law in the universe it's the law of give and take there is no taking if there's no giving and when you are sitting and you're just hoping to receive it doesn't work like that that yeah. that's that goes beyond the law of the universe it doesn't work like that so taking risks is my like you know breakfast in the morning that i take when people go like hey there's a new company that's happening and you want to you want to jump in yes let's jump in what if it's not safe and secure fine we will take calculated risks but we will take risks 
we might fail, but who cares? Let's yeah. fail. You know, at least we tried. You always learn from them as well, right? Every 100%. mistake is a learning curve. Hundred percent. It's uh, if people only just understand that fail w when it comes to failing, you're either winning or learning. There's no losing. We've just been subconsciously programmed to think that there's losing. There's no losing. E I'll give you an easy example. You order something online and you receive something completely different. Failure, right? Mm -hmm. Would you stop buying things online? No. No. You are on the street. Google's map. You lose the location. You've just failed. Is that? Is it a big, should you be ashamed? No, you go back and do it again. Same thing in entrepreneurship. Same thing when handling money. You lost your location on Google's map, start again. You've ordered something online, you received the wrong item, return it, order again. So we fail every day. We fail every single day. Yeah. I just don't understand why people make a big deal about it when it comes to something that might blow your life out of proportion and make it something completely great. They don't want to take the risk or fail, but every single day they're failing and they don't mind. What's the biggest mistake you ever made that actually led you down the even better path where you turned it around? Um, the mistake, the biggest mistake in entrepreneurship that I did was yeah. I had businesses with best friends and, you know, because I'm an empath and I, I don't believe in like stealing and cheating, like I have very high ethics and morals. I thought they're my friends no we don't need contracts we're good we love each other yeah we got this because i know i'm not like that and you know the crazy part is that good people think everyone's good bad people think everyone's bad you know so i ditched the contracts ditched everything and then i learned the hard way that even if you're doing business with family or friends you need to hang your emotions on the coat hanger outside the office door and walk in then business is business full stop end yeah. of story so i don't mix both but at the same time i'm not bitter because my friends did screw me over in the past. Gotcha. So I'm not bitter. I still work with friends and I still work with a lot of people. Like nobody can take that hope from me or believing in humanity, but I'm more cautious and I have boundaries. Great words. To be honest, I think everyone's been in the same position. Yeah. Someone's been working with a friend. They've been burnt out. You know, I have fingers crossed, you know. Yeah. People are smart enough just to get a contract mm -hmm. from the beginning. So there's no back and forth. Um, but it's great to hear from you as well, because I'm sure there's a lot of women out there as well who'd love to hear the insights in your set for business. Yeah. I know it's fascinating to me. But this advice is not just for women, it's for women and men, because I've seen men do that as well. Yeah. So yeah, just be careful, go on it, enjoy it. And to be honest, like I don't do a lot of business podcasts. Why? Because I don't believe that my journey in business can mm. teach anyone anything. It, it might inspire you, it might guide you, but you will never reach where I am because that's that's my location. I cannot drop it to you on Google's Maps, on WhatsApp, and you can reach where I reach. That's my story. Everyone's success story is theirs. You need to start and find yours, create yours. Don't follow someone else's footsteps and path because our paths are completely different. I'm a different person. I think differently. I react differently. I handle things differently. Under pressure, I work differently. So I don't like to do business podcasts because of this. And I'm doing this is like probably the first one I'm doing in like a long, long time because I just want people to know that the main secret to being an entrepreneur is just starting once you start it will teach you it will show you all you have to do is start and the journey is yours create your own story don't copy other people's stories because it might not work for you no of course yeah. i think you're a massive inspiration anyway I thank you so um, much. And it's great to hear, like, and, you know, it's not business podcast, more about inspiration yeah. for me and anyone else watching, because it's, you know, you've gone through so many lengths and, you know, you set up so many companies yeah. and you do it within your own free time. Yeah. It's, you know, it's amazing to see. Yeah. And, and just to let everyone know, from the age of 15 till today, I started 28 companies, 28, wow. I'd say 29-ish. They all failed. Only nine survived. And it's completely okay. And I say it proudly because it taught me so much. And if anyone out there wants to be an entrepreneur, you do not have to have any background, any educational background or experience in any field for you to be in business. I knew nothing about tech when I started tech. I started a restaurant. I knew nothing about food. It's just that if you have what it takes, you can make anything happen. And knowledge is for free. It's everywhere. Grab it. Be a leader. Hire people. Let them teach you. Go on the internet. Google. Everything is free. What is your excuse? No. Yeah. What is your excuse anymore? Back then, I had an excuse. It was hard. I was young. They didn't issue license for kids at, at the age of 15. Women entrepreneurship was not big. The, the culture was suppressing women. Back then, I had a million excuses and I still did it. What's your excuse today? That's yeah, it. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Well, one more last question. Tell me. Crypto. Yes. If you had to choose any project to bring to market, what would sort of be your ideal aspiration? I mean, the only way I got involved in crypto a little bit, uh, because it's not my thing. And which is completely fine, but I love it when people do it because I see how passionate they are about it. Um, blockchain is 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 unbelievably like it's like the best invention ever. 
and it solves a lot of problems and it's just so unique in the way it works. Now, the only way I'd say I've ever tapped into crypto was when I started my NFTs like three years ago. And I stopped that as well because I was like, it's fun, great. And I gave it to my partners. I'm like, you handle it. But like, that's the only way we, I got involved a little bit with crypto and like we involved it with crypto and all that. But other than that, I've not tapped into it. Gotcha. But I heard everybody's cashing at the moment with Bitcoin. <laughs> oh, they're all doing well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see the market change. Yeah, so. just, you know what I like doing? I, I just love sitting and watching my friends go up and down with like what's <laughs> happening. I'm like, oh my God, they're happy. Oh my God, they're sad. Oh my God, they're happy. But you know, whatever, whatever, whatever makes you happy shouldn't make sense to anybody. And no. I know a lot of people who love doing it. Yeah. Oh, no, I appreciate it. Thank you very yeah, much. You're Sarah. welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. And, uh, yeah, appreciate it. Pleasure of being Thank here. Thank you.